Happy New Year, everybody, in the Tampa Bay Buccaneers Madden 20 Rebuild franchise. How's it going? 2026 season getting underway right now as we return to action again today. And I have taken some of your feedback, and I agree. We should be playing Tyrone Bradley here at center, getting him as much development as a rookie as possible, especially since I have tuned the XP sliders, and it's going to be a little bit tougher to get upgrades for certain players. But he is higher rated than Frederick Hughes. We're going to play him here at center. And defensively, we're also going to be playing Hudson Lumen at linebacker and Malik Lennon at strong safety, where he is currently a 78 overall. Those were the two primary points you wanted to make in the comments, it looked like. I like checking the comments, though, to see what you have to say. A lot of times I'll overlook things or, you know, just spend two hours making my own decisions with nobody's input and after a while maybe I, I could use a little bit I did think about like what about playing Zach Lambert at outside linebacker in our scheme just like we had Javante Whitaker but Lambert really is not a cover player from here you can't really tell but his uh, coverage ratings are like under 50 so he's a pure pass rusher Hopefully he gets a little playing time. It's a little bit tough in this game to get that like three and four pass rusher rotation, which is one of my main complaints probably from the simulating. You can do it if you want different players starting and then different players in the rush spots, but that's really about it. Anyway, we're coming off our Super Bowl winning campaign. I want to make it to the Super Bowl again. Why not? I think this team is set up for another run. We're not going to watch week one today, though. We're going to figure out which of these games early on is the most intriguing after a couple sims. Excuse me? 189 yards? Seven first downs? This is the Minnesota Vikings on Monday night. Seven first downs. Least since 1971, I believe. 189 yards. Like 20 more than the Vikings had. 10 points. This is too much, Madden. You gotta stop this. Well, how did this happen? Jacoby Brissett did well, and this is a team that we beat decisively three times a year ago. Tyrus Sparks, one, one, six sacks. Hmm. I've been pondering in my undrafted quarterback little series there about if quarterback ratings have an impact on sacks taken. This outcome also does not make sense. I don't get it. Run defense, very poor in week one. Alvin Kamara, 111, two touchdowns. Hopefully we can uh, forget this one quick. This was awful. Max Heenan allowed three sacks. Uh-oh. Gilbert's back, three sacks for him. I thought maybe it would have been... Um, no, I forget his name. I'll scroll down and find it, I'm sure. Unless he's not on the team anymore. Tremaine Sullivan, who hardly played. Well, let's upgrade our new center and work on maybe making him a scheme fit. It probably will not happen, but it's his lower rating. Run block, the finesse ratings, and awareness. Not bad. After the Demarcus Lodge ascent, as I've been calling it, I guess, I don't want to overlook what you can do with some of these low-rated receivers. We have Dwayne McLean here. I feel like I don't want to go deep threat even though it is the scheme fit. I'd rather go slot, which is more realistic for him getting a roll on the offense. Good to see catching move up along with the short route running. So here are his ratings now. Chris Godwin. Let's go physical. I don't want to see stuff like catching traffic get low or release. Ability slot, huh? Alright. We have in, out, elite. And post specialist. I love post routes. Madden does not have anywhere near enough of them. Run support for Jerome Page. 87 overall. And the tackle boost. One last thing I want to do. I'm going to take training off of auto only because I want to take care of the focus players going forward and make sure I have the three selected that I want. I'm not going to do training though. One of the reasons why is because the rating spread this year from bronze to gold is pretty flat. It's like a 100 XP difference, and I, I really just don't want to do training. 
It's not interesting enough, and the rewards are kind of bad. We woke up for game two, 35-7. That is more like it. But Carolina might not be a great team this year. Logan Nichols had two interceptions, sacked three times. The pass game for the second week in a row did not do a lot. That's a slow start for Tyrus Sparks. The running game, though, was able to get something going. I have no clue why Sparks ran five times. That's something that usually doesn't happen. 17 carries for Askew, 10 for Robertson, 7 for Copeland. What a rushing day for the team, I guess. Jamichael Alexander got his numbers. Chris Godwin did all right. And a touchdown for Adonis Askew. Love seeing that. Heenan's now allowed four sacks in the first two games. That's not great. Leonard Merritt, Robert Cush, Kyle Caver get sacks. Malik Lennon and Jamichael Beekman with the picks. By the way, the focus players were pretty much all good. I just had to change one. I do want to upgrade Lennon and Bradley, our two new starters. But I'm also upgrading Denzel Denard, as he might need to uh, get a little boost here to become that starting caliber dominant receiver. We're upgrading Zach Lambert again, 69 overall with the speed rusher upgrade. Very nice as we get finesse moves. We'll check on contracts in a little bit. Let's go scouting right now. Let's see what we have for a draft class this season. We have a quarterback at the very top, quarterback at number five. All right. I'm not sure what to expect needs to be. Wide receiver though. It doesn't appear strong at the top, which is kind of a rarity for Madden. I feel like I haven't had too many draft classes that weren't good receiver classes. This one, at the least, still ends up having good mid-round value, but I don't know. Nobody at the top yet that I found very interesting. We move to 2-1, and one, as the offense again does not do a lot, but we beat the Pittsburgh Steelers. I was really interested in them drafting Elijah Welch because Josh Rosen is like an 81 overall, 29 years old. They still drafted a potential replacement in the first round. And that just intrigued me because I think it kind of made sense. Also kind of worries me because in my uh, Bronco series on the main channel, they have Derek Carr who's in that overall tier. And um, if they have a chance to draft Brandon Warren in this upcoming draft in that series, I'm going to be uh, very upset. But Rosen was picked off twice, had a much better game on Christmas Day in my uh, Bronco series. Tyrus Sparks, one touchdown, one pick. Adonis Askew didn't get a whole lot going here on the ground, despite our best efforts. And Chris Godwin had 77 yards, Lodge a score. And we have a breakout chance this coming week. Wow, Heenan, you're playing terrible. You've allowed six sacks. Man, three sacks for TJ Watt. Yeah, he's elite. Very good player. But you're supposed to be as well. So that's strange. Let's check on this uh, upgrade opportunity now. Wasn't quite sure who it was. And the breakout chance is for Denzel Denard. Oh, boy. We're watching this one, everybody. Jamichael Beekman was player of the week. He had the interception. Logan Nichols, holy cow. Five passing touchdowns, 293 yards. Not bad for Carolina. But now we have Chicago, a team I feel we don't see a whole lot in this series. Before we get to checking out Chicago, want to see this corner class. Someone's got to show me where I can go in the first round. Okay, maybe Sylvester Mumphrey if we finish, you know horrible he's an early first round talent can you help me somewhere else trey chancellor might be solid at any rate i'm not sure i have to draft the day one starter maybe a day two or three though if i can't figure that spot out though one place i could look to in this area of the game maybe i don't need to give extra experience here to lennon maybe he with a hidden development already being high rated maybe i'm better off doing something else right now let's upgrade antonio tandy he might be able to become a starter but he might need a little extra help too because he's already two years in and still not a starter tyrone bradley again 
again already. I guess with the uh, focus player and all that stuff, it's moving by pretty quickly here. Bradley gets a nice awareness, pass block, and run block boost. I was just curious about Elijah Welch, by the way. He should be getting focus training, and he is. So he gets that little development here, but Rosen's an 81. Madden probably isn't fine-tuned enough to where, like, Welch becomes a starter late in the year or in year two. I don't think he closes that overall gap fast enough. But if Rosen declines to a 79, Welch moves up a few ratings, maybe. One thing I've noticed, though, and maybe there's a story now I can point to as an example, but the CPU does bench certain players based on performance, but it's normally at running back. And... I've seen this now for the last few years pop up in the stories. I don't see one right now, but if I see it again, I'll definitely point it out. Athleticism in, is in Sylvester Mumphrey's genes. The Stanford cornerback is the son of a legendary Olympic sprinter. Alright, I know who I want to trade up for. I should check on those stories a lot more often. I do skip over them a lot, kind of because the draft, like, isn't super challenging as much as I may make a look at times but um I don't know I feel like I missed something with Jalen Slate last year and I'd like to know the Heisman winners and everything else but we're getting into week four and we're facing the Chicago Bears they have most of their top talent on the defensive side of the football still have Tariq Cohen and Anthony Miller on offense the quarterback is a 32 year old Mitchell Trubisky I can't believe that with his ratings declining, they are still sticking with him. But get ready to watch Trubisky today. Joe Henson at tailback. Anthony Miller. Denzel Smith. A second year, fourth year player. My bad. Was he on the uh, free agent market this year? I can't remember. There was a superstar receiver. I believe that was. The ratings are interesting basically exactly how I rated uh, Lamar Williams when I put him into the Broncos franchise on the main channel. Alright, so a pretty defensive football team here. Offense just has to have a decent day, I feel, and we've been waiting on one all season long. Let's not let Antoine McDuffie have his big rookie breakout against us, though. We're breaking out the throwbacks today, too. I know how much you all like seeing those. You can hardly tell the Bears uniforms are throwbacks. They kind of just look like practice uniforms. Let's take a look at what the Bucks are wearing today. Yes! For some reason, I see these uniforms, and the first thing I think of is Josh Freeman. I don't know why him and not, like, John Lynch or another player from, like, the Super Bowl team. Nope, I think of Josh Freeman. Chicago starts offensively with Mitchell Trubisky under center. And he's going to start this with a little pump fake and dump it off with the pressure. Missing Cohen. Tampa trying to move to 3-1 on the season as Chicago again heads to the pass. And DeVoe with the pressure. And Trubisky's intercepted. Jerome Page. How about that one? In the zone as well. Two plays in. That's what I'm talking about. All right, offense. Right now. Right now is a good time to turn it around in the air. And we come out wanting to run. It's a play fake and Sparks delivers. Hmm. I wonder if I have my playbook for this. I'm thinking I don't. That could make for an interesting setup here. Deep drop Sparks. He'll fire one downfield. Godwin around the 15 hauls it in. Yeah, I forgot to switch to my playbook here for this one. My bad. Sparks outside the pocket and drops it off to Dawson Knox. Running for the first time and down to the one. That's Adonis Askew. Remember, breakout chance for Denzel Denard, and not having my playbook probably hurts because you can get a lot of big plays out of what I have built. Toss left, and all the way outside is Lawrence Robertson. The Buccaneers strike first and early capitalizing off the turnover. 
fun start here for the home fans and we'll focus primarily on the offense with them not playing all that well and the opportunity we have for Denzel Denard the Bears though using up a lot of plays on this drive getting down the field and marching inside the 10 where they score a touchdown To the air on first and ten. Here's Sparks. Uh-oh, a lot of trouble, and he's not able to escape the pressure from Bragg. Denard is in the game when we go to two receiver sets. He wears number 81. Play fake on second down, and Sparks delivers one to Chris Godwin. There we go. Fix that issue with the sack. We keep things in the air though, Sparks, there's Godwin again, he broke a tackle to the 10-5 touchdown! 58 yards for Chris Godwin, what a start. We keep going to that skinny post play by the way. That's like the third or fourth time we've already called it. That's right, he got post specialist. I highly doubt that's impacting the play calling. But if it is, that's a good touch. Nice start for the offense, though. Good to see that pass game being successful again. Chicago, meanwhile, they were running the ball quite well. But then they fail. Rob Reisner is their punter, by the way. How about that? Let's sim a little bit of the offense now. Hopefully, Denard catches something. And uh, that's Godwin. That's Godwin again. Chris Godwin. Trying to set records all day long. He caught the ball four times in a row. And that was before this sequence where he now has five catches on the drive. Okay. I'm okay if he, you know, sets a record or something. Jerome Page knocks away a pass. That's not ideal. Chicago on the move. Going backwards though. And <laughs> Jerome Page again. Where is Denzel Denard? Bottom of the screen. And we are going to run the football. Here's a skew. Getting outside. Up the middle, a skew with a nice run to keep the drive moving along. Well, now we take Denard off the field. I don't think it's happening, everybody. Handoff, and not much. Bunch formation on third down. A good time to look for Denzel Denard, I would say. Here's Sparks. He'll fire downfield, looking long, and caught! Denzel Denard, his first of the day. 31 yards for Denard. I'm glad we got something here for him in the first half. Sparks first and 10. This one is jarred loose. Wow, Roquan Smith. Best day passing already, though, and we're not even halfway through. Second down here for Sparks. Now down the left side and caught again by Chris Godwin. What a day. I don't even want to see his yard total. Yes, don't show me. I want to see a surprise at the end. Never mind. Nine catches, 178 in the first half. Oh, what? No one blocked McDuffie. Denard, bottom of the screen. Maybe it's his matchup. He's lined up against Byron Jones. Third down to the end zone. One-handed. It counts. Touchdown, O.J. Howard. Love it. Buccaneers up. Three scores before half. I now have it so Denard goes to the slot when we go three wide just to get him away from Byron Jones in those situations but I wonder how much we pass the ball with this 17 point lead for now we're running and Askew picks up two third down for Sparks Denard slot left now Lodge is matched up with Byron Jones here's Sparks a lot of time to throw it it's complete OJ Howard around the 40 Play fake now for Sparks, getting outside, firing deep with it! Knocked away, trying to get to McDonald. 
Are we calling the same thing here? There's a strike! Chris Godwin, now over 200 receiving yards. It's one of the biggest receiving outputs of the entire series. 10 catches, 201 yards. More play action from this three tight end set. Watch out. Bragg again. We can't get out of this formation. Second down and 20. Another one? We have like four plays in this playbook. Sparks sacked again by Bragg three times. Now we got to go get 29 yards, and part of me thinks we can do it. Sparks, though, throws short. All right, that was a weird drive. I'll do some simming now with the offense. Not sure it will help much. OJ Howard made a catch. Another sack. That's five. Third and 11. Intercepted Antoine McDuffie. Well, we haven't had a ton of these breakout chances work out. Doesn't appear this one will. Chicago has the football now. They're trying to get back in this game. And Cohen breaking tackles and trying to get to the edge. Gets a yard. New Orleans is 3-0. They might be a more formidable foe this season. As Cohen is stopped again by Kyle Caver. Denver 3-0. They made some big moves in the offseason to help their offensive line. Play fake on third down. Here's Trubisky on target. First down, Bears. More running room on this play. It's a nice carry for Cohen. Brought down by Malik Lennon, number 44. I did change his number. Felt like changing it up from 46. Second down. Now they're going to look for the big play. Here's Trubisky to the end zone. It's overthrown and nearly picked. That was Jerome Page who almost had it. Hey, Jesse Reyes. 10 carries, 28 yards. Third and three. They got the first down. Looks like Henson's the power back. Sylvester Seymour, everybody. He's making an impact as well. Maybe final play of the quarter and another tackle for loss. Aggressive Jerome Page. Cohen's motioning to the outside. What do they have called here on third and 13? Trubisky downfield, and this is broken up by Jerome Page. He's literally everywhere. I feel that this is one of the best years for Madden when it comes to safety play. As Sparks is going deep, and that is not Denzel Denard. That's OJ Howard. But I feel like the star safeties in this game consistently stand out. And I never felt that way before in Madden. You know, they have interception opportunities, and it's all about catching them. But as far as, like, showing off range and plays and run defense, like, I love the safety play in this game. It's much improved. Second down after a good run by a skew. I assume we'll see a lot more of that. And he's caught in the backfield. This is definitely much more of a pass-blocking offensive line. No surprise that's performing better today. Third down. Pass protection is good and complete. Denzel Denard. All right. We're about halfway there. Two catches, 48 yards. How are we getting 52 more? Blitz sent by Chicago. Downfield. Godwin. Skinny post. And we're over 400 passing today. What is the record for this series? I got to start keeping track of that kind of thing. To the air on second down. And Sparks scans. Fires. Touchdown. Denzel Denard. Okay, so I think he needs either one more touchdown or like 46 yards. It's doable, but we're up three scores in the fourth. What will the Bears do here? They get into Tampa territory, get deep down the field too. And they will get a first and goal and score a touchdown. So maybe it's close enough for us to keep throwing. One play, Denard. All Jones has to do is slip or something. 
but they don't slip on perfect uh, conditions here. First and 10, and play fake. Sparks airs it out, and Godwin is there again. We're going to keep it on the ground with this one. I love the spin move there, Askew. That was a great attempt. Got to pick up 13. Maybe Denzel Denard can be called upon here. He's in the slot. Here's Sparks for Godwin. Fourth down. Well, at least Chris Godwin is out here trying to set records. I'll do some research while we watch this. Bears possession and Cohen is motioning all the way out. First down, Trubisky with four minutes to go. Complete. This will get them a first down because of Jerome Page's penalty. The record is held in real life by Vincent Jackson for receiving yards in a single game in Tampa Bay Buccaneer history. That was set against New Orleans, 216 yards, October 21st, 2012. I'm pretty sure Godwin's over that now. And, hey, we got some pressure there. Oh, they set up a screen, that's why. Third down, Trubisky. He fires complete. Wide open. Trubisky on first down. Nice play, Devin White. I wish Madden would show more of those, like, team records. Like, just team up with one of those stat databases. Get it all in the game. That'd be so much fun to see records broken throughout the franchise, whether it be, you know single season records for a team like that's cool to track at NCAA I love that feature or rivalry history which used to be in Madden like our franchise players love the detail third and three still going if they score without using a timeout it gets interesting Trubisky he just threw it into alignment One yard to go. Trubisky, end zone, it's perfect! What a throw! And the Chicago Bears still have a shot in this game. We haven't ran the football well, but we need to to close out the game. Play fake! And here's a throw for the first down! Okay, that uses one timeout. A minute 27 to go, running right. Here's a skew with a good first down carry. Power look now, play fake again, trying to win it right here. Sparks, fires one, and he almost got picked off. I don't know why they call so many play actions in these spots. Like third down, it does make sense, but second and three, why? Play fake again for the win! Got it! Dawson Knox. Maybe you thought that Mike Evans would have had the single game receiving record for the Bucks. He doesn't. However, if you look at the top seven games all time, Mike Evans has four of them. He's had some big days in Tampa. But two of those games were in 2019, one was in 2018. So a lot of it's been pretty recent. Love the fit with Bruce Arians there in real life, too, with Winston, Godwin, Mike Evans. Like, Winston's going to be the only 5,000-yard passer this year. It's hilarious. Oh, this bug again. Wow, haven't seen you in a while. How you doing? All right, we'll check the box score after this. It all counts. No worries there. Tampa Bay victorious. That was pretty fun, even if Denard did not get his breakout. He had a touchdown, but simply Chris Godwin decided he was going to have a career day instead. Our passing game had their best day of the whole season. Tyrus Sparks, 456 yards, three touchdowns. The sacks were a little concerning, as was the lackluster ground game. But Godwin had 13 catches. 243 yards and the touchdown, which would shatter the single game record in Tampa history, which was 216. Yeah, that was a bad day for Tyrone Bradley. Definitely had issues there with Bragg. I want to check out Bragg's ratings and see if there's something he's really good at. But that was tough. He is one of their top players. 86 overall. 
and 92 block shed which is more of a defensive rating his pass rushing isn't that great but on play action obviously we see a lot of uh, block sheds and that seemed to be where the bulk of the problems were Denar didn't upgrade but I still think he's a pretty good receiver his XP bar though is definitely tougher to work on now and I have to be pretty selective with where I put these points because I'm probably not going to get a lot of them, sadly. Like, missing out on that upgrade definitely hurts. Normal dev is not a great place to be in this game if you want to get better. Why don't we go with the deep threat archetype? I want to keep him a scheme fit for now, but I would like to go slot with one of these if we can... Uh, get the chance but sadly those two archetypes are still even that was a pretty good time though I enjoyed today's episode why don't we just take a look at some initial contract requests Jerome pages is not bad at all Max Heenan that's pretty good Ali Marpet obviously Sean Murphy bunting we'll just have to see how we can make everything fit and if we can but I do want to keep Jerome page so if we could take care of this now, I'd love to. I'd do a five-year deal right now. Let's make it happen. Jerome Page says, nope. We're getting another chance next episode. I've got to see who's getting it. In week five against Atlanta, Adonis Askew gets it again. He did not much last episode. Or today. <laughs> but uh, we're going to get a third try, I think, at... Converting this upgrade for a skew. Wow. Well, we're watching week five. We know that now. And maybe we'll sim the Viking and Ravens games. But that was a fun episode. It's an interesting season so far. Two undefeated teams left. The Saints, who have allowed 34 points in four games. That's terrifying. 10 points allowed. 0 7 17. Wow. It's like the Patriots to begin this season. The Saints might be more of an issue this year. I'm not sure if they made like a huge change. They're running the ball well. They did against us. Kamara did here. I'd be shocked if he's not currently leading the league in rushing. Oh, he is. 453 yards in the first four games. If we go to passing, Sam Darnold currently has six touchdowns and is doing pretty well. Drew Locke keeps getting better in New York. He does have star dev now but he's also 29, so that progression is going to stop or slow down at least. Receiving, Chris Godwin is your leader. Ooh, Hakeem Butler. You have my attention. He was my favorite receiver in this last real-life draft class. Not that I thought he was necessarily the best, but he was my favorite receiver overall. He's been on injured reserve, but uh, I'd look for him next year in that Cardinals offense as probably one of their better downfield options. Assuming that he can translate his game from Iowa State. I really liked him there. But that is going to do it for this episode, everybody. Thank you all for watching. It was a fun time. And next episode, can Adonis Askew get the big breakouts? We will see. Please leave a like, subscribe to the channel, leave your feedback below. Love seeing what you all have to say. I'll see you all next time. Have a great day.